What's going on everyone, it's Gadgets Boy, welcome to another video and right behind me is a prototype of the brand new Mercedes AMG C63S e-performance and this is the estate version. I'm excited to show you guys what this is all about. No, we're not going to be getting V8 in this one, but it doesn't mean that we don't get a lot of power in this, which is ridiculous. We're going to talk about that uh, later on, but the first thing first, let's talk about the styling. Let's start with the front of the car. We have a brand new AMG grille here, which looks really good. Big Mercedes logo but we also have that AMG badge which is right on top of this area there and another one just sat over there but I think overall the front just looks very mean and this if you see this in your head mirror you know this is a fast car and we've got that nice headlight as well LED headlights which again looks really good it's got tiny little details in there like the Mercedes-Benz logo uh, in letters written in there moving to the top of the bonnet we've got this uh, cooling area so this is actually real so we've got this vent that keeps the engine and the battery uh, cool on the front and in fact let's look at the side here it's got that extra wide area just going over the wheels and the wheels itself it's got this aero design for aerodynamics i'm not sure what the drag coefficient is on this one uh, but i will find that out and st stick that in the description area we move to the side we've got more styling here with some more writing turbo e performance so that way you can stand up from the crowd and it's got another vent on there and then we've got this nice side skirting so this has got a night pack on this particular version i don't know if that's coming to the uk or not but it just means you get this glossy black finishing on the side skirt and on the wing mirror as well which also has a camera there which i'll show you that guys that inside when we get in because that allows it goes as part of what allows us to have that 360 camera for parking and all that jazz we'll have a look at that as well moving on to the back of the car we don't get that henched look that we get on like the rs's and m cars but it still looks really nice and subtle but i kind of like it i kind of like the subtle look and then i think this is where we charge the battery get that opened up so you can still charge this up is not a fast charge or anything like that it's a small battery in there again we'll go through that spec when we get in the car and we'll sit down moving on to the back of the car the amg styling carries on here we've got the badge there mercedes logo and here there's this c63s in red normally anything to do with electric we have them in blue but mercedes have gone with red uh, because this is the e-performance version and then we look at the uh diffuser on the on the lower area here we've got the quad exhaust but it's not actually real exhaust there we've just got a single pipe coming from here and then split with the exterior design of the exhaust area should we see if this is open in the back have a look at the boot space yes it is all right so we have a big boot space here it's got this nice uh, stepper area I believe you'd be able to fold a seat back and get extra room in there if you want to put more stuff in there. This is the kind of car that you use to almost pick up your friends, you know, go to the, go to the bins, drop things off, or if they're moving else, this is the kind of car that you use for that. And then once you've done that, you can all get excited and floor it when you get on the motorway, uh, for example. But again, we'll talk about the speed when we get inside. But this is the boot space. It looks nice and spacious. Let's see. Oh. You could probably fit one of me in the boot as well, which is not bad. <laughs> and let's just close this up it's a prototype boom and then we got the boot spoiler on top of there again with the night uh, pack it comes in this finishing the whole thing is a nice matte finishing on there as well which i kind of like but i suspect that's going to take a lot of uh, maintenance looking after this matte finishing might be a lot of work but we shall find out moving on to this back area here we've got this uh, vent area but i think this is actually not real because it doesn't go anywhere I don't know why to do that, but as to the styling. Right, let's take a look on the inside, starting with the back seat area. Before we get in, I actually really like the sound of this. Oh, sounds so clean. I love that. But yes, let's get in. First thing first, we have plenty of knee room, plenty of headroom, and my feet as well is feeling very comfortable here. We also have this panoramic roof, which gives you extra sense of space inside here. So if you're sat at the back on a long journey, you rest assured you're gonna be nice and comfortable. You even have heated seats, which is here. Great sound system in here. And all your climate control for the back passengers is right here, just in the center console area. And you have two USB-C ports, so two of you can charge your devices comfortably. And there's an armrest as well, which folds down, rests your arm, nice and comfortable, enjoy the ride. I, saw, I love the red detailing as well from the seat belts here. Just, looks sporty and this material the stitching it just looks really nice and uh, you even get a nice view of the driver area see what they're doing and when they're tweaking things we'll talk through that as well when we get in the front but 
I think all in all, in the back, it feels really nice. It's luxurious and spacious and comfortable. Sitting in the driver's seat here, it looks really good as well. We've got this carbon finish in on here. It's the glossy carbon finish. And we've got the vents all around here. You can change all the lighting around here. You can customize it to make it just the way you want it to look. We've got the red stitch in here and the start-stop engine over there. We've got head-up display, which can also be configured. Uh, I'll show you guys that as well uh, shortly. And we've got this big display infotainment system here and another big display uh, for the driver to look at different things, which can also be configured. Right here though is where the, all the magic happens for the driver so we've got loads of buttons here there's touch screens buttons everywhere this is my ideal version of a gadgety car and you know if you're into your f1 as well there's some sort of f1 tech in here because at the end of the day mercedes mercedes team um but yeah we've got paddle shift there for getting adventurous so if you want to change things manually yourself or track day uh, kind of situation you might want to use that the left side of the button controls everything on the instrument cluster and the right side of the button, uh, the steering, sorry, uh, controls the things on the infotainment system. We've got this nice Arcantara finish on the steering as well. Feels really nice and soft. Mixed with some leather finish in here, stitching, red stitching, uh, carries on, AMG logo there. So, first thing first, before we go onto that bit, we've got these two buttons here. So one allows us to control the engine sound. So they've got speakers outside of the car and inside, obviously, to let you hear what that sounds like. This starts in electric mode. So which is the comfort mode and stuff. And then we've also got another button there to control your drive mode and drive settings. So you can go to manual mode. Uh, for example, this little dial here allows you to change to different things. So like sports plus, et cetera, and race. Again, we'll go through that on the main screen uh, shortly. But for now, these buttons here are kind of, you know, touch sensitive with haptic feedback. So if we press home, for example, it gives us the option to change the way the characteristics of this display. So we can sort of swipe across between track race, super sports, sports classic, understated, navigation, assistance and service and so on. If we scroll up, that gives us the option to change what we can see on the head up display. So we can go track pace again, race, super sport and so on. So what you might want to do is maybe go, uh, let's go standard for the head up display. So that gives you like speedometer and stuff like that. And maybe at the bottom here, we go sport or classic. We can go classic. So that will give us your basic, again, ref counter, speedometer, and so on, and range, and how much we've got left in the tank. So nice and simple, nice and straightforward, and I think it's very easy to understand straight away without having to read uh, any manual. Let's go over here, though. There's a lot more to show on the infotainment system. So like I was saying here, I can press this button here. That takes me home. So as I'm driving, I can just use this to control things on the infotainment system, and so on. Otherwise, I can just come here and use the touchscreen display because this is all touchscreen. You've got different users, as you can see there, it's got a uh, lovely sewer there. <laughs> I, I, I think that's how you say it. And uh, one thing I also noticed when we got in here is the fact that you can also log in using your fingerprint. So there's a little fingerprint scanner here. As well as having this fully touch control uh, infotainment system, we have some buttons all at the bottom here, which we'll go through. Uh, but before we do that, down here, we have two USB-C ports. There's a wireless charging area plenty of room for your cup holders and here we press that we get another two USB-C ports to charge your device so we've gone all modern here with a uh, USB-C port I just placed my device here for now nice and tucked away distraction free and that will wirelessly charge my iPhone 14 Pro Max in there but back to those buttons here we have a fingerprint scanner so different users can log in using their fingerprint which is pretty cool volume control there power this on and off this button though is interesting if we press AMG, which we're already on the AMG screen, but let me show you that again. If we go back home and we press this, we can select different drive modes. So you can see there we've got individual, hold battery, electric, comfort, sport, sports plus, and race. And all this will have different characteristics to do with the drive, the suspension, the dynamics, and also that button on the steering wheel is also here to control the engine sound, for example. So if we were to go to sports plus, we can go across here and change things on the drive nice and responsive and you get nice aptic feedback to let you know when things have been selected pretty cool right and if we select uh, parking cameras so you can see your location you can see the cat the car there full full 360 ignore the writing on the car there is still a prototype so this is even the saloon version here so i guess the full version will have the estate picture on there hopefully so we've got that there we've got the battery information and energy information so you can see charging information there it's a small battery in there, I think it's like 6.1 kilowatt hour battery in there, which is basically just used to 
uh, reduce turbo lag and give you that boost uh, every time you put your foot down in different modes. So things feels like gear one every time you change and shift up the gear, which is pretty insane. We'll talk more about the, all that spec in a second. We go to car settings here. We've got head up display settings and you can switch it on and off. So we tap that, it goes off. Press it again, it goes on and park Trinet can allows you to park nice and easily. Active lane assist, or we can go into all settings and have a look at what safety options we have. So here we've got driving assist, we've got collision avoidance, more assistance there. So you've got all kind of different safety options. Go to vehicle settings, got all this here, dynamic select and winter tire limit. Lights though, you can change all the interior lighting like I was saying earlier. So again, if you go to interior lighting, you can change all that the way you want it to be. And you've got that projection on the outside as well. So you've got that be a Mercedes logo. I nearly said BMW there. You get a Mercedes logo that gets projected uh, on the floor. Go to system settings for your Hey Mercedes stuff. So that will pick up the voice when you say that. Just like your Siri on your phone or Amazon Alexa. Go to info, tells you all about the car. You can look at a digital owner's manual in case you get lost and you don't know what you're doing. And you've got your climate control just at the bottom there. That's always constant. So you don't have to try and find it whenever you need it. You can also drag down here to go back to that car settings if you want to do that. Or we can just press home rather than swipe back up. <laughs> here we can scroll across, you've got a map there, you've got navigation, phone, media, so this supports Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you've got plenty of apps available as well. You've got to store to download stuff. Where it gets really interesting on this side though is we have two different things. Let's go to the performance first. On performance, we can look at energy flow. We can see the way the energy is distributed throughout the car in different modes so that we're, got, we're in sports mode right now. But if we change that, that will change as well. So we go back to performance. That will change on the corner there so you can see the characteristics. And then we go to drive. You can see the way, again, the way the electronics, electric power has been distributed all around the car. We've got vehicle information. Again, look at the suspension for torque vectoring and all that stuff, all there. And then we look at engine engine information especially when you are racing and stuff like that this would be good you can see all the temperature gauge and stuff and consumption for the battery and actual fuel as well so we can select battery tells us what we have if it's fuel it tells us what we have there as well which is pretty straightforward i kind of like the infotainment system here it's very easy to navigate and figure things out let's go to track pace though this is very amg specific particularly on this one here so as you can see there, you can go on, you know, track days. And when you go track days, this will record all your telemetry and all things that if you do a drag race, for example, this will record all your data. And even this here shows up on the uh, head up display there if we change the settings. This also then works with an app that's on your smartphone. So it collects all that data for you to be able to look out on your smartphone and share it on social. And one thing that they mentioned, the Mercedes mentioned is if you mount your device and you do things like drag race, for example, when you connect it and you mount it there, it can use the smartphone's front-facing camera and the main camera to record your session and sort of patch it all together so you're ready to share it on Instagram or Twitter or wherever you like to share your videos. Uh, one thing that's also cool though is this will store different data on different track tracks that you've been on. So for example, we have Silverstone Circuit here and there's, you know when you play a PS5 F1 game and you get that little car, ghost car that shows up on your race, that will show up on the head-up display, like some sort of like AR fun function, which is pretty cool. For performance and the way this is gonna drive, like obviously we can't do that because we can't take this on the road to actually drive it, but this is a two litre uh, four cylinder engine, so not the V8, but it still performs very well using that F1 hybrid uh, technology in here. So we're looking at 680 horsepower in here, which is extremely powerful, I think. I don't even think you'd be using all of that unless you take it on track. We have 150 kilowatts uh, electric motor in there and we have electric turbo with two stage gear uh, shifter at the back. So when you go above 140 kilometers per hour, it will switch up and you get that 10 seconds boost in there. In terms of battery size, it's only a 6.1 kilowatt hour battery and it will also regen as well. But that's mainly there to help with things like turbo lag and stuff like that. So there's no turbo lag in this and zero to 60, you're looking at 3.4 seconds and top speed at around 176 miles per hour. So with a combination of things like torque vectoring and you know electric turbo and that powerful engine that we've got in here, you're looking at something that's really powerful and even the back steering and four wheel drive as well, obviously. And the back will turn 2.5 degrees, which means when you're taking corners and stuff like that, it will grip those corners very well. You probably do faster speeds than anyone else when you're doing corner in particular. And that's it for the Mercedes 
C63S e-performance, and I think all in all, it's a great looking car. I think it's undeniably an AMG vehicle. It's fast when you need it to be. You can use it on track days, but if you want to use it for everyday use as well, it's very practical. It's very comfortable inside with loads of gadgets, and that's what I love. But anyway, if you guys have any questions, drop them below. If you want to know anything, let me know. And uh, if this is your first time around here, please do subscribe, smash the bell notification so you get notified every time there's a new video up on the channel. And uh, if you like this, make sure you hit that like button. And if you don't, double click the dislike button. I'll see you in the next one.